there, Bill Horsecutter again with another episode of The Radical Geek, and this episode we're going to be doing on steampunk. What is steampunk? Well, steampunk is Victorian age clothing and dressing, as well as artifacts, given a sort of a sci-fi of the era kind of twist to it. Your Jules Verne, your H.G. Wells kind of stuff. So we're going to talk to some of the people who actually participate in steampunk with the costumes and all that, and. Uh, See what they, why they do what they do, and have some fun. Hope you enjoy. Okay, I have Eric Brewer here of Rochester I mean, Steampunk. Or Professor Vertigris Wetware. Alright, and, uh, and basically, um, um, why steampunk and what is the appeal of it? Why steampunk? Uh, uh, I don't know why the universe. I mean, they both just sort of happen. Um, the appeal for me, um, I've always enjoyed the Victorian look. Um, this is a neo-Victorian way. I'm an old line science fiction nerd from back when. Um, but uh, this is something both old and new and different in a way that. Uh, I enjoy the fashions, I enjoy very much the sort of creativity and the emphasis on doing, making your own things that uh, is very much a part of the steampunk community and culture. Alright, and um, can you talk about some of the influences of steampunk? Well, steampunk existed before steampunk existed. Um, the look itself as a neo-Victorian science fiction goes back long before the science fiction author K.W. Jeter coined the term in the 1990s uh, uh, to describe what he was jokingly going to refer as the next science fiction wave after cyberpunk. Uh, before that, the term didn't exist, but the look did. Um, so you'll see it in Disney movies, you'll see it in the, uh, 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 the Time Machine, uh, you'll see it in the writings of H.G. Wells and Jules Verne. Um, but since it sort of got a name and then went and collided with the maker movement, um, with uh, a, a, a lot of extra energy from the cosplay community, it just sort of took off. <laughs> okay, can you explain how your group got formed? Um, well, I was at a steampunk convention in Detroit um, and bumped into another fellow who uh, uh, was from Rochester. And uh, well, there's two of us at least, so why don't we have a group? And we decided to start hosting. He'd, he'd started a Facebook group. Um, we decided to start posting yeah, events Sarah, and posting um, uh, 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 meetings on. We meet once a month for Sunday every month, 7 p.m. at uh, Java's on Gibbs Street, downtown Rochester. It's an open meeting, you know, people can come dressed up and costumed or not at all. Um, we kind of have a few minutes of business and then just general socialization and Tom Fool. Are there any subgenres to uh, steampunk? Oh, <laughs> it's like herding cats. Um, different people come to it because of different things that they're interested in. Some through the literature, through the books so, or movies. Others because they have an interest in fashion and have stumbled on the steampunk look. Uh, others through the maker movement and find that they are enthused by the arts and crafts and uh, uh, design aspects of it. Um, so, uh, uh, others through history and historical reenacting. So, uh, uh, the interesting thing that I find about steampunk is there's a lot of people who just aren't like me. Who I meet people with very, very different politics, very, very different views on religion, uh, 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 tastes in food, tastes in music, all that kind of um, People who I wouldn't ordinarily wind up bumping into or associating with. 
and it's uh, just going to be like that. Um, I have to ask this, because I find your hat very interesting. It has a clock and it's keeping it very good, very decent time. Can you explain making that? Well, um, it's a very easy modification. It goes back to the sort of steampunk ethos of do your own, make your own, costuming, props, devices, what have you. Um, uh, uh, the modification itself is easy. There's a little movement inside it. These things cost about 15 bucks. The really difficult part was working up the courage to punch a hole in a perfectly good top hat. It's a, a kind of like cutting a diamond, you know, and you get just the one shot at it and it had to be perfect. Um, but the notion came to me. I'd seen people do clock decorations of hats, and I thought, well, you know, why not make them work? It's very practical. I can always find out what time it is. I just have to ask someone. <laughs> I like it always tell me. Two plus. Yeah, I've got Victoria Lee Connors here with the steampunk fan also, and they say you do jewelry as well as hats. Yes, I do. And I use recycle, antique, and vintage material, and I um, solder them together or wire wrap them together to make steampunk style jewelry. All right, and uh, can, do you have anything you're wearing now that you made? This one right here. It's one of my earlier pieces. This is an old clock piece. All right. Then I wire wrapped some stones into it. All right. And is there anything else that you've made? Have you? I handmade this hat. Okay. Hand felted it. And uh, how long did it take you to make the items? This one about. Oh, this one only took about two hours. This took a while. I hand felted it. Okay. I'd say about eight hours. Okay. And then the coat, they added the patches to the coat. That only took a few minutes. Okay. So you just basically got something like a thrift store coat or something like that? Or yeah, and redid all the buttons. And okay. And uh, what drew you to steampunk? Well, I have to say... I, mean, I don't really don't know. I just like it. Okay. All right, so I thought you'd be like, okay, and um, how did you get started doing all this stuff? How did I get started? <laughs> New Orleans. Okay. When I was down in New Orleans, there was a, a, a huge steampunk theme, and I was already hand-making hats, and my style just kind of went with the steampunk, so then I started experimenting more with jewelry and gears, and then that's how I came about the steampunk. All right, and uh, what do you plan on doing in the future? Well, right now I'm building up my millinery um, skills so I can hand make more hats. And my future plans is to get back into jewelry, but more fabrication. Okay. Um, any materials you haven't used that you like to use? Gold and silver. Okay. <laughs> All right. Precious gems for jewelry. But right now with my hats, I mostly just work with wool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, we have Robert Walter, yes. a.k.a. Colonel Patrick W. Kelly. And can you tell me about the getup you have on? Uh, the getup I have on is a, it's supposed to be Civil War, post-Civil War uniform of the Victorian era that I made myself. Um, I am a commanding officer of the 26th New York State Militia, which is a regiment I made up to go with the um, character. Um, it is. It consists of authentic Civil War um, officer pants of the early Civil War. Uh, dark blue was uh, not standardized, but was used until um, 1862 when it was uh, standard that they had to wear light blue pants. Um, the frock coat I got from my aunt. Uh, it was used by my grandfather for a play they were doing at the German house. Um, but my aunt didn't know the play nor what the uniform was for, so she gave it to me, which basically is the start of the um, uniform. Uh, most of the awards I'm wearing, I made myself, except a few that I either bought or had given to me. Um, I do have all different names for them. Um, that'll go through a long time. Um, I have a 
authentic Civil War officer belt along with a replica of an 1850s um, officer saber which they used throughout the whole Civil War. Um, today for my uniform I have my uh, United States Colonel's shoulder boards on instead of epaulets to go with the more of a outdoor theme. Um, today I also have my pith helmet. I have several um, varieties of hats that go with this uniform. I have two capes and a sun hat made from um, palm leaves. There we go. And um, these shoes are actually modern day dress shoes, but they looked like the periodic shoes that they wore at the time. All right, and can you explain why? what was the attraction with the steampunk? Attraction with steampunk actually goes back to when I started uh, reenacting at the age of 10 with the United States Naval Landing Party. Um, I had a very keen liking to the Civil War, um, and while trying to do some research, I ran into steampunk, um, some steampunk weaponry and wanted to know what it was. So I looked up steampunk and it just kind of grew from there. And once again, the jacket kind of just started it all off for me. Um, I mean, this used to be very, very basic. I used to wear normal jeans, um, then dark blue pants, and then it just grew to what I have now. Um, the latest admin is actually my graduation tassels I use as another award for my uh, character. Okay. And uh, how did your character come about? Uh, my character came about um, as I was trying to think of what this jacket would be for. I wanted it to be early militia, Civil War, but also be within the um, time frame of the Victorian era for steampunk. So my character kind of bends the rules of uh, the stand what was standardized at the time. Uh, this jacket would have been phased out for a uh, actual frock coat or shako or a sack coat. And the blue pants would have been phased out for light blue um, infantry pants. These are actually artillery, but early militia used to wear red as well for their uh, regiments. Um, and Patrick Kelly kind of came around as I was trying to think of a name. And as well as my regiment, the 26th New York Militia. Uh, that I had to do research on to see if there was an actual 26 which when I went to the State Museum uh, website and looked through their Civil War listings they had for regiments, there was only the 25th militia, 25th regular, and then 26th regular. So I knew that I could do the militia and get away with it if I wanted to. Um, it's kind of just a fun little quirky thing that I tried to work on and it just kind of exploded. <laughs> I'm actually, I have other outfits and I'm uh, starting to work on a diesel punk. Outfit. Okay, what's Diesel Punk? Diesel Punk kind of starts in the middle of um, World War One, be, being the transition from steam to diesel engines. And by the 20s, steam is all phased out as diesel engines take the place and goes to um, World War Two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.